In this video, we will be designing a 3D printed part to attach to this motor. The part we'll be printing is a gear so that we can drive uh, a gearbox using this small 3 volt motor. We'll be making use of some digital calipers to take a few measurements on the motor itself. Uh, while I will be taking a number of different measurements, the principal measurement I am most interested in for our 3D print uh, at this time is going to be the shaft itself. So here we go, we're going to take a measurement of the shaft. And the shaft is going to measure at about 1.9 millimeters in diameter. You will see the digital calipers uh, fluctuating a little bit, and I take the measurement a second time just to be really clear uh, and to be sure that I'm getting an accurate measurement. Our 3D print will need to be slightly larger than this, so we'll be setting our uh, the, the bore of our gear to about 2.1 millimeters when we get there. Uh, I'm going to take a few more measurements here, and then we're going to fast forward to Fusion 360. So here we are in Fusion 360, and we're going to be making use of the built-in add-ins. So we're going to select the scripts and add-ins, and then we're going to scroll down towards the bottom, and there's going to be an option called Spur Gear. Once you click on that, do hit the Run button, and that's going to open up a menu for us. This menu has a lot of choices. The principal thing uh, to determine the size of the overall gear is the module. We're going to be picking a very small module number of 0.7. Now when you do that, you're going to see some errors down at the bottom. So we're going to make our adjustments uh, to some of these measurements to fix those errors uh, in order to have a gear that's going to print successfully. Uh, so take careful note of all the measurements that we put in here and uh, feel free to follow along in Fusion 360 and copy these same values. For the gear that's going to be attached to the motor, we will be setting the number of teeth to 8. Once again, take a careful note of all of these values uh, and make sure that you have the same values when you're printing your gears. So here you can see our very small spur gear with eight teeth and it has a 2.1 diameter hole. Uh, this is going to be the gear that we're printing and attaching to our motor. Now, I am going to make another gear in this video, and that gear is going to be a much larger gear, uh, which will mesh with this gear. In order to do that, I'm first going to move this gear out of the way so that I have space to, uh, to place the next gear. Fusion 360, the, uh, the script that is making the gear, will always uh, place the gear right at the center of the uh, origins. So uh, we're going to move it and then capture the position and then we're going to run the spur gear again. Now one of the nice benefits here is that all the values are the same so the only thing we actually need to change are the number of teeth. Uh, however, the most important value to keep the same is the module number. Uh, as long as the module number is the same here, uh, we will end up with two gears that will mesh nicely. So I'm actually going to change both the number of teeth and the size of the bore going through it. Uh, that way uh, I might be able to attach this to a 4 millimeter shaft to drive a different kind of shaft uh, on the other side of this. So uh, you may make different choices with this one, but this is just to demonstrate how we can have more than one gear that will mesh nicely uh, using Fusion 360. So here I'm just going to demonstrate by moving the larger gear that they do have a nice, uh, nice, nice mesh. Okay, so now we've got two gears. Uh, we're going to print the smaller gear. So to do that, we're going to select the Make tab and the 3D Print. The default for Fusion 360 is to try to send this to a 3D printer, um, but our 3D printer isn't configured to run straight from Fusion 360. So we're going to deselect that, and we'll save this as an STL file. Uh, and the, when you just hit OK, it's going to open up a Save menu, and go ahead and title this something that makes sense to you. I'm going to call this uh, the Motor Gear version 1 and I'll save that. 
and it will be saved uh, in the downloads folder as an STL file. So once I've got that saved, I need to open up something that is going to allow me to turn that STL file into a printable file. And I'm going to use Slicer, which is a free open source software. So I add the STL file. And uh, bear in mind, this Slicer uh, is set up for my 3D printer, which is a Maker Gear. Now, unfortunately, Slicer crashed when I first ran this, so I had to reopen it and uh, run the file one more time. So. Here we go, opening up Slicer. It is designed for the Maker Gear 2 version E, um, so all the settings are optimized for that. So we put our STL file in here, and then we export the G code. Now, uh, most of the, uh, most all 3D printers do run G code, and I use, a, again, another open source free software called uh, Print Run, which uh, I can load my G code file directly into and then I'll connect to the 3D printer and execute the print. So here I've connected to the 3D printer and you can see that everything highlights uh, and I have buttons that I can actually press and use now. So I need to set the heater and the bed to the default PLA uh, temperature settings, which are 220 for the tip of the printer and uh, 60 for the bed. Now I fast forwarded this so that the temperature raises much more quickly and we can get right into the printing. And so here you can see that the print run actually uh, follows the 3D printer as it's being printed uh, with a nice little green uh, line. This is uh, at a much faster speed. It took a total of about two minutes to print this uh, small gear. And once it was done and it had cooled off on the bed, I attached it to the motor, which you can see here. Thank you very much for watching and catch you next time.